Good morning, everyone. Um, I hope everyone's safe and sound and that uh, your biological clocks are adapting to the um, winter that's coming on. Uh, my name is Kurt Lamarck and I'm the technical manager for IOPSA in the Western Cape. Um, I've also been a plumber for a million years. And today I want to highlight grey water. Uh, the intention today is not to make you a grey water specialist installer, but it's to highlight grey water. Um, and you'll see as I go through the presentation, the importance of grey water. Uh, and it's an opportunity for you chaps to get involved in grey water. And the time for talking and thinking about um, water management in this country is over. We have to, no matter what, how you look at it, as plumbers, we have to start thinking of, uh, of water management. And we sit with, a, with the most prized commodity on earth, and that's H2O, water. It is worth more than oil, gold, ga uh, natural gas, diamonds, everything put together. Because without this, uh, we are doomed. And you'll, you'll see why, specifically in this country, grey water is of importance. So the idea is just to touch on grey water, what it is, how it is. Um, but really, it's an opportunity for you guys to Think about getting involved in this sector and creating a whole new company um, or addition to your uh, existing company. And it's going to require a, a, a bit of effort from your side to go and study grey water. The internet is full of it. And just so that you know from the outset, there is no SANS regulation regarding grey water, but there are worldwide accepted practices and regulations for grey water. And I hope this is going to be beneficial to you. I hope that um, out of the 50 odd people that are on, at least some of you will seriously think about this and, and um, understand the importance of water. <clears throat> so grey water, is household water generated from shower baths and washing machines. And I know we, we know this, but I promise you, you cannot believe how many calls I get from the consumer out there. Oh, they want to convert their uh, domestic household to uh, gray water systems, and they want to put their dishwasher and, the wash and sinks out onto the garden. And you explain to them that they can't do that. Then they want to know why. So grey water can be recycled on site for irrigation, toilet flushing, and, and even laundry due to the lower levels of contaminants. Now, black water is from a toilet, a sink, and a dishwasher. And it's very simple because it has high concentration of organic matter <clears throat> and bacteria. So it needs to be treated separately um, with chemical methods and remember that in the case of sinks and dishwashers we are dealing with oils grease and fats so <clears throat> that's why you cannot use that <clears throat> sorry guys i just had to clear my throat so black water So black water in sanitation context denotes wastewater from toilets, which is likely to contain pathogens, um, which may spread by uh, fecal or the oral route. Um, not getting into too much detail, but oral, I think you understand um, a lot of people, if you're feeling nauseous or something, you get nauseous into a toilet. Um, so for obvious reasons, you can't use that for grey water. It contains feces, urine water, and toilet paper from flush toilets.
sinks and dishwashers. So water from sinks, you've got the grease, you've got the oils, you've got the detergents and higher load of chemicals. Um, a sink tends to be a place where you clean all sorts of household stuff and you put you could put ammonia in there or all sorts of stuff. And water from dishwashers is very similar to sinks as well. Now, what can gray water be used for? So gray water, if it's there are many systems available and from basic to quite uh, well advanced methods. So with proper treatment, gray water can be put to uh, good use. And these include water for laundry. So normally the domestic household will um, not be able to do this, but there are systems, as I say, and they do come at a price, obviously. But if you clean this, water properly, you can reuse it for laundry. That's how advanced gray water systems are. Toilet flushing, that is a very different um, aspect of uh, gray water. Um, there are eco farms around the world where toilet usage can be uh, used for composting, but it takes many years to get it to that position, but it's not impossible. Treated gray water can also be used to irrigate both food and non-food producing plants. The nutrients in gray water, such as phosphorus and nitrogen, uh, they provide an excellent food source for these uh, plants. Now, the phosphorus and the nitrogen come from the soaps that we use. So when you uh, start using water for gray water, you're going to have to change your soaps that you use and, and go the more eco-friendly ways. And they contain the phosphorus and nitrogen, which is really, bent. that's what plants need to, to grow. So why recycle gray water? And, and this is where I'm, I'm leading to regarding uh, the water management in this country. South Africa is a water stressed country, believe it or not. Our average rainfall is around 492 millimeters per annum, uh, sorry, uh, milliliters per annum, about half the global average. Now, of the water that we get, 60% of our water in South Africa is used for agriculture because we are an agricultural based uh, country and also don't forget mining uses a tremendous amount of water as well. In homes most of our water usage goes to flushing toilets and then taking a bath or shower. So if you have a large uh, family you can imagine the amount of water that's uh, being used. And then in households with gardens, over 45% of water usage goes to irrigation. So when you're driving down a leafy suburb and you see those fantastic glass gardens, um, they're nice because it takes a lot of water to keep them that way. So in fact, South Africa, in fact, this uh, statement that is one of the 30 driest countries in the world is actually slightly incorrect with the 29th we've gone down one place and that's i checked the figure last night again and uh we we are the 29th driest country in the world now i'll show you maps just now and you're probably sitting there thinking how on earth is that possible that we can be the 30 driest country in the world when we have what's happened in KwaZulu, and we have all the rain that's falling in uh, Gauteng and that, yet we are one of the 30 driest countries in the world. And our average rainfall is about 40% less than the annual world rainfall. That's quite hectic, guys. So I think you, just from the statement, you can start seeing that we're in trouble, big trouble. And just to put it in context, our neighbor, 
Namibia is actually the driest country in Africa. So think of North Africa and Mali and Chad and Niger and uh, Libya and Tunisia and um, Egypt and those places. And we think of desert and we think of pyramids and camels. But Namibia is the driest country in Africa. And Egypt has more water available to it than South Africa. And that, that's um, quite a, a, an issue. So here's a map of water stress by country for predicted to 2040. And you can see the bottom says extremely high, larger than 80%. That's South Africa, guys. That's us in Africa there. But look at all the other countries that we associated with, driest countries in the world. And you start looking up the coast there and you start seeing Sudan and Ethiopia and all those places. They, they're nowhere near. And yet, if we think about, we turn on the news today and we see all the famine and droughts and all that going on in uh, Sudan and Ethiopia and those places. And yet, we are way, way drier than those countries. So... We're sitting on a time bomb, believe it or not. We're sitting on a time bomb. And we have to, as I say, if this map doesn't show you that we have to start changing the way we um, manage water, then I, then I don't know what's going to change, change us. And that's from a, a small little dripping tap. If I see a tap dripping, I, I break out into a sweat. Gentlemen, on the left, we have a map here, 1995. And on the right, we talk about 2025. So those of you that are up to date with where we are in our lives, we'll know that we're in 2022. So in almost two and a half years time, we are going to be more than 40% uh distressed in 1995 we were between 20 to 40 percent and we now have, are moving from that figure to 40 percent and look how the maps change look at north america and they got even a worse uh, situation because the state of california which is the ninth largest economy in the world and when I say economy in the world, I'm talking about countries. It's the ninth largest economy in the world. 85% of American fresh produce comes from the state of California. They don't have water anymore. And they are making huge strides to change that. And we've got to start doing that now. And unfortunately, without getting into a political debate and all that, we cannot rely on our government to help us with um, the, the water management. It, it's in dire straits. So a few facts about gray water. Remember that gray water may never be used on your domestic sprinkler irrigation system or in a sprayed application. It can only be used through a drip irrigation line. Um, with mulch on top of it, for obvious reasons. Um, let's paint the worst case scenario. <clears throat> you know, when, when you get on an airplane <clears throat> and the captain says to you, in the unlikely event, well, in the unlikely event that this garden that's being sprayed, the person living here or the household living there, one of them has a disease, whatever it is, think of any disease. And they're using this for spray irrigation. And a lady with a newborn baby is pushing a pram down the road and the wind gets hold of these particles and they breathe it in. Imagine what's going to happen. So for obvious reasons, gray water, irrespective of who says what, you may not 
um, sprinkler or spray gray water. And if you're in the Western Cape, if you deal in gray, anything to do with uh, water other than municipal water, you have to get the permission from the city of Cape Town. It is a bylaw. You can't just go and administer and install. Sorry, guys, I've got a bit of a frog in my throat. So an average household, family of four, will use between 300 to 400 liters of reusable water on a daily basis. Now, that's an average household of four. And if you come from a sporting family, um, you can imagine that 300 to 400 liter figures just increases in scale. And a lot of that's just being flushed down the drain and going all the way to the sewage farms, which, by the way, also need uh, water to function. The residues, the soaps, etc., in the water in diluted quantities can provide useful phosphates. I've, I mentioned that and nitrates, which some experts say is more beneficial to the garden than clean tap water. So. We know that plants uh, need phosphorus, phosphates, um, sulfates, sorry, and nitrates to grow. And um, the water from municipality is cleaned and chlorine put in and is good for drinking. So there are benefits of, of gray water. It is Advisable to use biodegradable products. I mentioned that earlier. So if you're going to go the gray water route, then there are many products out there at, at health shops, um, in the supermarkets, everywhere uh, that are biodegradable um, that you can use in washing machines and in the bathrooms. The every suburban garden accounts for about 35% of and as I said, it, it, the, the figure will go between 35 to 45% for domestic uh, consumption. So if you can take a lot of your bath, basin, and shower water and change that, um, you can save a lot of water uh, on your water bill. So most of the concerns about gray water are to do with the hygiene aspect and the odors of water. But these aspects are eliminated if the water is reused as soon as possible and bacteria is not being given the time to produce. <clears throat> so <clears throat> gray water, when you apply gray water <clears throat> and you store it in it and goes into a tank or <coughs> sorry guys, gray water cannot be stored longer than 24 hours because the nutrients in it will start to break down. And that creates bad odors. I think um, being plumbers and you arrive at a person's house and <clears throat> there's water been standing for a while. We all know what it looks like. We all know it's, um, how it smells. We know what it does to the surrounding area. And also it attracts mosquitoes, which is the last thing you want as well. So just remember, gray water cannot be stored longer than 24 hours. It's, it's in and out. So there are many gray water systems in the market. Um, and you need to really acquaint yourself uh, with it um, and read up and study the various methods. And get an understanding of, of gray water. Because as I say, you can most definitely start a business just on gray water. And remember that there's no SANS regulations. And I've been looking at gray water for the last 20 years. Um, and there are no SANS regulations. Um, but as I say, it's advisable to gain the knowledge and apply best practices when working in this field. And there are, the internet's full of it, you, of how to deal with gray water. And later on at the end, I'll show you, there are 
associations and businesses that you can contact that um, are that deal in green building, green energy, um, sustainable. Uh, there are architects who deal in all of this. And you, there's a lot of material available for you to learn. So when we talk about grey water, there are really essentially two methods of installing grey water systems. The one is the retrofit. So Mrs. Jones will phone you and say, we've decided we would like to go the grey water route. And you arrive at her house and you have a look. And sometimes it's possible, sometimes it's not. It just really depends on the existing layout of the drainage system that they have. You may only be able to use one or two basins or baths or shower or but retrofit is more difficult, guaranteed. <clears throat> so ideally, you want to get in from startup. And this is where all these green eco building associations and um, architects come in. Because if you can get involved with those chaps from the beginning, from design stage, you can be part of it because you have to have dual piping. And... Don't forget the RPZ uh, valve as well, um, which is in the national standards anyway. Uh, the minute you use a, a bib tap, which every garden has one, you're supposed to have a RPZ valve. So as I say, retrofitting can be um, a, a lot more difficult and a lot more intricate. Uh, it's not impossible. Um, ideally, you want to get from startup. So if you're thinking of getting into this business, get hold of the associations that are involved in uh, green energy and uh, eco-friendly building and green building practices and architects and get involved with them because they are looking for people. <clears throat> so here's an example of, of of a company in South Africa called EcoGator. Um, they have a very good product out there. Um, it can be put down into the ground. Everything goes into there. And um, the most important thing with gray water is it's not coming from your bath, shower, basin, washing machine, and then just going straight out. It's got to go through a, 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 a cleansing system it's got to go through um uh, uh, uh i'm sorry i'm just trying to th uh, through some filters and this is in order to catch hair um skin um uh, you know when you bath and shower you, everybody sheds skin whether you like to hear it or not but we do um and you might have a scab or something on your arm that all gets caught up in there in grains of uh, soaps that haven't broken down yet. And they do go through different filtration. And at the end of the day, you get the nice cleaner water coming out, which you can put straight into your garden. And uh, believe me, you can have a stunning garden with gray water. Um, this particular model, I've installed quite a few of these in my time. Um, and uh, it has, as you can see, there's goes through a various uh, filters that catches from hair to the minutest particles. And only the cleanest, cleanest water will go through. And this particular system here also has um, what we call a spider. So it has eight different, it comes into like a ball and then it diverts to eight different um, drip irrigation pipes that you can feed into your garden. And um, it, it, it works very well, this system. Um, there are other ways of, of uh, cleaning gray water. Um, for example, this particular system here, you can have in a garden and you can have a water feature with plants growing because remember plants also break break down um, gray water so if you have this kind of system going in your household 
you can make a really nice water feature with it and um, enhance uh, what your garden looks like. So the Green Building Council of South Africa, these are the top guys. They, they deal in everything to do with green building. Get all of these guys, find out how to even become a member, um, go to their workshops and get involved with the architects there. And gentlemen, there are many, many people in this country who are going the green building way. And they, and they deal with all the sustainable building materials from windows to bricks to everything. Um, Sustainable South Africa, another um, fantastic organization that deals with everything across the board for um, domestic water. And, and besides electricity and, and, and bricks and everything else that goes with building, get all of these guys, go and see them, go and understand what they're about and get involved. Gentlemen, now is the time to diversify and make a difference to your business because of the water situation. And what I've given you are facts. We are a water distressed country. And we have to, we have to change the way. So go and study the subject, contact the various organizations, contact green architects, go to the Architects Association of South Africa, find out who the green architects are, get involved with those guys. Um, there's many ways to, to get involved in alternative water sources. Good luck guys, and start now to make a difference in your businesses. And I thank you very much for your time. Uh, those guys that want to go down this road, you're going to need to put in a, a, the extra mile, but it's going to be worth it in the end because we are going to have to start going that, this route. So good luck, guys, and thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, we do have two questions here. Um, we have a question here that says, you did not mention anything about aerating the grey water. Yeah, um, so today was not a, a to, to um, go through the whole technical and, as I said, not to make you a, a grey water in, installation specialist, but it's just to highlight the, the need to start getting involved in grey water, why we need to get in grey water. That, you know, we all know our electricity um, situation in South Africa, but believe it or not, we can live without that electricity. Yes, it's a, for want of another word, a buggerance factor in our lives. But gentlemen, no matter how much money you have, no matter who you are, if you turn on the tap and there's no water, there's no water, this world will die. And that's what I'm trying to highlight. Um, so, yeah, um, there are many uh, technical aspects of grey water that one can talk about. But that was not the purpose today. The purpose is to plant the seed in your mind for you to get involved in an alternative way um, to add, uh, enhance, diversify your plumbing business. And believe me, I know of guys that have stopped plumbing and are just involved in grey water. And that was the purpose today. And we have another question that says, how long can grey water be stored before it needs to be processed to be used for other applications? As I say, not longer than 24 hours. The, the earlier, the better. But after 24 hours, um, you must understand that um, it's, it's full of um, uh, microbes and um, the soaps that you've been using and that starts to break down. So the, the sooner you clean it, the quicker, but yeah. So the more closer you are to 24 hours, the, not the worst, but um, it's, it's, it's better to in and out. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Have a blessed week.